Yo, 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 it's your boy Sir Quinn from Best of the Best Entertainment where we keep our eyes and our ears open for local, global, up and coming and established public figures. Today, we are switching it up a little bit. We are taking it behind the scenes. We got a manager in the house. Please, introduce yourself. Andre Baskin, AKA D-Rock. So D-Rock, how long have you been in the music business? Since the early 90s. Early 90s. Wow, man, that's a, that's a long time. So what made you up it to management or change your career profession into management? Time, I mean, age, you know, music, everything evolving, different. I figure it's time to do something different. Yeah. So you you, were, you put on the teacher hat, huh? Yeah. Like, what's some advice that you would give a, a young artist? The main thing is, it, it, is invest. I mean, without investments, I mean, your career will go nowhere. You know, it's more business than it is talent. Right. You know, a lot of artists think just because they hot, you know, they deserve a shot. Right. But if don't nobody see how hot you is, where you gonna go? Would you say it's a lot easier nowadays than it was back in the days? Definitely. Definitely. Nowadays, you got, like I said, social media. I mean, anybody can get a distribution deal. Back then, you have to have a certain amount of numbers. You have to have a certain buzz. I mean, you, you can start your own digital company if you want to, just waking up saying, hey, I want to be a rapper. Right. Nowadays, like, everybody rapping. Everybody got talent. Everybody spit bars. If you was to pick the, the epitome of an artist, what kind of artist are you looking for? One that ain't lazy, and like I said, one that's hungry for it, you know? One that's ready to grind, because you get some of those artists that's conceited. And like I said, those be the ones that think just because they got bars that they can just sit around and not promote themselves. You know, I look for the ones who's constantly promoting themselves, constantly on social media, you know, showing what they got, showing their talent versus just bragging about it. I'm a, I'm a manager myself, and I will say it's a lot of stuff that I'm not going to touch on because we're in entertainment right now, but what irritates you as a manager or as a producer or as an engineer the most in the music industry? Other than the cockiness, basically, I mean, I really can't say what don't. I mean, because everything I see now is basically, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, please, you know, that ain't the way. But, you know, it's, it's, it's good business, but then again, like, the promoters, like, I think that's the main thing that, that really irks me, you know. They want you to pay $200, $300, you know, for a, a venue to perform, not for the venue, right. but to perform in front of people, you know, who's doing the same thing you're doing. I mean, that type of stuff. You know, why would I pay you $200 to perform in front of a room full of artists? You know, right, I think right. that's the main thing that, that really gets to me. What would you do different as a manager? Me, I would focus on building a buzz. As far as if I had a club, I would focus on having my own crowd there. So when I do book a show, at least artists know that they got people there that's there for the talent, other right. than just waiting for their turn to perform. Right, and, th and that's what's going on. Uh, that's what people forget, should I say is that you have to have a fan base already and, and people come out, they don't, they don't want to hear what's on the radio. They don't want to hear, they come out to see or hear like music they never heard before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, So I feel you on that. So as a, as a manager, you in the studio, do you, are you like a hands-on manager? Or are you just like all in, the all in the rapper's ear like, or the singer ear like, like look, that's not sounding right or like I what mean, kind of manager would you to, say that you are? To a certain extent, I am, but like I, I'm pretty much all over the board with it. In order to teach, you have to be them been taught. Right. So as far as like if I'm dealing with an artist and I'm recording their music, yes, my opinion matters, you know. And one reason is because, like I say, I didn't I didn't been there. Right. You know, I, I know what people get booed off of doing. I know what albums done flopped in the past. So if you're creating a, a sound that's sounding like something that somebody done turned down, 
I'm, I'm gonna tell you now that ain't gonna work. And that's an interesting point because it's it's a lot of artists out here that are not raw. I'm just gonna put it out there like that, man. They they not hot. Got it. So um, that's so what is what is your take on the creative concept of of an artist? Do you feel like that? You should leave their music alone and just let them be creative be, and let them do what they do? Or, like, what's your take on that? It all depends, because nowadays hit records are garbage. That's the term I use. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it, it all is, I mean, you can polish a turd right. and make it look good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and people will buy it nowadays, you know? That's, that's just how the game go. But what I'm saying is, like, if you got an artist and he's not that good of a writer or whatever, try to aid in the system, you know? Right. I mean, if it, like me, I engineer. I, I do everything. So I, I know a ton of rappers. Because it could be that song that you like, man, dude, you ain't you ain't go hard at all, bro. Like, right. man, that shit, was, that shit was garbage, man. And, 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 some, and that, that might create some kind, of, some kind of buzz, you know what I'm saying? So... Like it's, it's it goes hand in hand nowadays. Like it, it's not even about good music; it's about marketing. So, with that said, like I see y'all ninja in marketing, man. Like, what is your 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 marketing concept? Like, how do you push your artists out there to get everybody to know them? I see on Instagram y'all going crazy. Like, like what is your what is your concept? Like, what do y'all wake up and say? Like, okay, we got to do this. We got to do this. We got to do this. One of the most things is like investments. Like, if you're packaging and everything is done correctly, people gonna pay attention. Right. And then stay consistent. That's the next thing. I mean, you don't wanna promote today and then, okay, I'm finna go on a vacation and, right. and not even log into my social media. You know, you gotta do that constantly. Right. You know, when you're on in the toilet, I mean, when you at <laughs> dinner, I mean, He's whatever you do, <laughs> always, you know, stay consistent with promoting. Right. I mean, cause the more you get heard, you know, the more fans you're gonna attract. So, uh, <clears throat> word on the street, man, is you got a mixtape you sitting on. Yes. I, don't, I ain't gonna say who told me, but <laughs> so I ain't, I'm, we ain't gonna touch on the mixtape. But if you were to push this mixtape and you got this day and age of social media marketing implemented back in the 90s, how would you be pushing that mixtape right now? Or are you still gonna push the mixtape? Yeah, I'm gonna push it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna push it for the simple fact, although, like I say, I'm a lot older, I mean, I have features on there, you know, and one of my artists is all over the album, and right now, she buzzing. Right. So, that alone. Who would that be, man? <laughs> who that be? Yeah. The one and only Whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the R&B queen around here. Absolutely. You know, and. Uh, Shout out Whistle. And like I said, that, that album alone is, man, I mean, even though, like I said, I'm 44 years old, you know, I didn't, I didn't had distribution deals, I didn't had a, 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 a company come at me for the distribution. So I, I know what it's like to, you know, walk in the artist's shoes. I was fortunate enough to be a part of something that was buzzing. But like I said, now who want to see a 44 year old rapper? Everybody keep telling me, oh, Jay Z, 50, and that that's them. You know, on me. You know, most of my guys in prison or, you know, six feet deep. I think that would be actually kind of controversial, man. It's in like 44, I, I can see marketing that, man. Like 44, years, like it's so many keywords you can put it, like pounds, pound 44 year old, still doing it, pound. <laughs> but I kind of do it as a hobby. And if it works, it works. Cause see, then I would be a hypocrite if I would be one of the ones to, you know, have artists. Like I currently have six artists. Right. I was well, just going to ask you that. So name your artist. Name your artist just for camera purposes and best of the best entertainment marketing purposes. I have Whistle, R&B. I have an artist, Tell P. He's a male rapper. I have another female artist that's a rapper, Mikey. I have another artist, Ray De La Vega. And then I have another artist. He's all around the board. You know, he make beats and everything. Baker Man. And Mr. Da Vinci. You a that's busy the last, man. That's the last artist. Yeah. You're a busy man. How do you take time to to market all these artists? This is what I do. Yeah. I mean, I I put a hundred percent. I mean, I I I quit my job to do it. I mean, just like 
anything else. If you want it done, you'll do it. So what's your, what's your take on, on pay to play? Do you agree with that, that whole concept? To a certain extent, sometimes it's beneficial, sometimes it's not. You know, if, if, you, if you got a room full of artists who are waiting to perform, then no, I wouldn't pay you $100 for a slot. But if you got a national artist coming and I know half of the, or, or possibly the whole city gonna be there, then yeah, that's worth investing, Absolutely. you know, $100 for. Right. Know, it depends on who's coming, you know, I, I might invest more. Sometimes it's beneficial, sometimes it's not. It's a waste of money and time. When you guys set up a show, do you bring all your artists out to, to actually perform that night or do you just? No, I, 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 I try to spread them out randomly. Because, I mean, for one, like I said, you know, they're all in different genres and it all depends on the, the show, right. the location, you know, that's so, how I, I determine who perform where. So um, what, what is your main focus for all your artists? My main focus is... I mean, you have, you have a, I'm sure you have a selective, like you have six artists, so. Yeah. Like, like what is your main focus, like, when, you, when you're in a room, like say if you got all six of your artists and you just like, man, we, we got to... My main, my main focus is work. Because like I said earlier, if, if, if you don't work, you won't be heard. I mean, just because you think you hot, you think you the, the best or whatever, that don't mean they think you the best. You got to show them. So my main thing is work. Because if you don't work, if you take off, then I'm off. You know, right. why would I work? And you're not working. Right. So would you, you would say it would be consistency? Yes. What are you working on now? Like, what is the entire label working on now? Everybody is being managed different. Like, every, some artists have mixtapes. Some artists have singles. Uh, some artists have albums. What, what we're currently working on now is uh, we currently have the Mixed Emotions album. Whistle, that's in stores everywhere. Mr. Da Vinci just dropped a single, that's in stores everywhere. Tail P got an album and a mixtape. Single will be dropping. Uh, Mikey's working on a mixtape, that'll be dropping. And Ray De La Vega, he, he's, he's all over the board too. You know, he, he does his own videos and everything too. And he's working on stuff. He got a couple mixtapes that's, that's out now. Spin Rilla, that piff all over. But like basically, I mean, it, it don't Can stop. Can we find all your artists on a website? Yes. What, where's the I website? A company website? site, lammg.com. So y'all make sure y'all go check that out. So what can we what can we see from from your label that this year that we didn't see last year? I know y'all was going wicked crazy last year. So what can we see this year? Who's doing a lot of traveling? This year you're gonna see us in movies. What? You're going to see us in movies. Cool. I've currently written a script, and my artist has written a script. She'll kill me if I mention the name right now. <laughs> but Come on, man. Leak on, it, man. Be on leak the lookout it, for that. Leak you know? it, man. Leak it. And, uh, and that's like real soon. I mean, they, everybody already has the script, so we'll be filming that. Absolutely, man. So, look, man, y'all been in the mindset of Andre Baskets, man. If y'all looking for management, Y'all looking to collab with this artist, man. Y'all get at this, man. The website will be at the bottom. And, uh, man, I'm all out of questions, and we just finna go ahead and wrap this up, man. It's your boy, Sir Quentin, checking out with Andre Baskins. And, man, like I always say, shh. Shut up and hustle. Shut up and hustle. Yeah.